The book starts off with the advantages of JavaScript animation, uh, basically why we're talking about JavaScript in this book and not, uh, I almost said Counter-Strike, not CSS. Uh, then we dive right into essentially a full overview of how to use Velocity, which of course is the animation engine I wrote to essentially replace jQuery's animate function. Um, a lot of this education is uh, equally applicable to jQuery's animate function. Um, and it also dives in pretty deep. It's not just a rote walkthrough of like passing this option, use this function, but it goes deeper than that. It actually adds context for why you'd use certain options, where and when. Um, it's a pretty good replacement for the official velocity, doc velocity documentation if you find that dry. So after that, we go into uh, motion design theory, which essentially covers uh, best practices for uh, two aspects of including animation on your site. One is the concept of utility and the second is elegance. So utility is things like how do you make motion design useful? How does it further increase user confidence and user experience? And elegance is how does it aid the aesthetic uh, you know, aspect of web design? Um, so we covered the groundwork there so that the subsequent chapters you can kind of understand the context for applying a lot of these you know, tips and techniques. Uh, so then we do animation workflow. Uh, I'll say the content in motion design theory, you will have read some of that before. At least half of it you will have not have read before. Um, animation workflow, meanwhile, is completely original. This is all stuff that is exclusive to Velocity or things that I've come up with um, or rarely seen elsewhere that most people are not doing and uh, the fairly helpful approaches for cleaning up your animation code. Animating text is another really unique chapter. Um, I've, I've actually never read an article online about text animation as a whole. And this dives into another library I wrote called Blast, which allows you to delimit text so you can you know, break it apart and animate its constituents, constituent pieces uh, and do some really cool stuff with it. So this covers groundwork for how to animate text, which is a very little used animation technique on websites, and um, not really appropriately so. And I, we, we cover that in uh, the standard approach to text animation, uh, why it has been done and where it can be done in a non-frivolous manner. Then we have a quick uh, SVG primer. Um, this chapter isn't very meaty, but for any of you people who've been pushing off learning SVG, this is the chapter that will finally convince you to go and dive deeper. And it provides um, uh, some... Uh, I'm not seeing it in, in the TOC here, but it provides resources for you to go learn more about SVG and become very competent in that. I've included this because it's, it's a huge part of animation going forward today because the benefits of SVG are just countless. and. Um, it's simply not being used enough. Um, this is one of the larger chapters, of course, animation performance, something that Velocity is known for as being a performant animation engine. Um, I go into, uh, I'd say about a third of this is stuff you've heard, uh, maybe half the stuff you've heard about, but I break it down in a way that's incredibly digestible and has a lot of meaningful recipes for, um, a lot of actionable recipes. Um, that really um, surround the performance best practices you've heard about with enough context to understand how to holistically apply them to um, you know, every aspect of UI engineering. Um, what else in here? So this isn't actually, this has nothing to do with velocity. This is not like how velocity works. These are best practices uh, to be used regardless of animation engine. Even if you're not even animating, um, this is kind of um, key stuff to, to understand uh, in depth. And just to go back briefly, so SVG chapter has nothing to do with velocity, that's independent. Text animation almost has nothing to do with velocity. Animation workflow is about half velocity. Motion design theory has no velocity content. So if you don't use velocity, this is not just a velocity book. There's a lot of other stuff in there. Lastly, we have the animation demo chapter, which kind of um, brings everything in the previous chapters together into a full walkthrough of this is very velocity uh, dependent, by the way. A, f a full walkthrough of Velocity's advanced features and how to use them to uh, really clean up your animation code, make it more expressive, more performant. And in all the while, we go through things like 3D CSS Primer, and we learn a lot of really cool stuff about 3D animation in the browser. And uh, this is not a typical demo walkthrough you'd find in, in most uh, programming books that are usually very, very dry and boring. Uh, this is more like a story being told and uh, like, like an entire really A to Z of how to master, master velocity by going through these steps. And then we just happen to use um, a code example really as an excuse to go through things. So this chapter is totally worth um, 
reading slowly. Anyhow, that's the uh, book, Web Animation Using JavaScript. It's a little bit of a misnomer because, quite frankly, it's more like web animation best practices um, in JavaScript, you know, prominently featuring velocity, so I apologize if there's any confusion there. Um, yeah, this is a kick-ass book. Thanks to uh, a kick-ass time making this book, and I think it's fairly well written. I hope you guys get value from it. Um, forward by uh, my buddy David Sandro. Super, super kind of him to write that. Uh, and yeah, I hope you guys enjoy.